Today I'm going to be building a complete DIY analog bench power supply. The actual analog power supply kit that I'm going to be using is this one. It was shown and assembled in Vollog number 8. Besides that, I'm going to be using this plastic enclosure, which I think it's quite nice and perfect for such project. This one can be found on Banggood and there will be links in the description for all the items used in this build. I'm also going to use this uh, toroidal transformer. It's a 24 volt 3 amps one. So this will give me plenty of juice for this power supply circuit and it will also ensure a nice low noise operation. I got this one locally and it should be the best option to get it locally wherever you are because these things are heavy and shipping would probably cost more than the item itself. I paid something like $17 for this one from a local distributor. Since this is an analog power supply all that dissipated power needs to go somewhere so I'm using this recycled heatsink that comes from an old uh, computer together with this 50 mm fan. The fan in my case is a Sunon Super Silent series 12 volt fan because I like my bench instruments to be quiet but you can use any fan that will fit your enclosure. I'm going to have to figure out a way to mount all of this inside the enclosure but we'll do that later. We also need a panel meter for this uh, power supply and I'm going to use uh, this one. I talked about this panel meter in volt log number 63. It's a nice little unit that can show voltage, current, power, uh, capacity and time with two measurements being visible at the same time while the others run in background. For getting uh, nice fine adjustments I'm going to be using these uh, 10 turn potentiometers. Uh, these are uh, borns, but I got them from eBay, so I'm pretty sure they're knockoffs. A pair of these uh, 4mm um, sockets for the output terminals. A rocker switch for the on-off. And this uh, fused IAC connector uh, on the back for providing an easy way to connect uh, mains power. And this DC to DC converter for generating 12 volts rail for powering the cooling fan. I could also be using a linear regulator on a small heatsink for that job, something like a 7812, uh, because the fan only draws about 500, uh, about 50 milliamps, but I don't have any of those uh, linear regulators on hand in my lab. So the total cost for all of these items at the time of making this video is about $54, and goes like this. The analog power supply kit is $10, the toroidal transformer $17, the heatsink was free as it was uh, salvaged, the cooling fan $8, the panel meter $11, the uh, two 10 turn pots were about $5, 4 millimeter connectors $1, uh, rocker switch 0.5, the DC to DC converter about one dollar and the IAC mains connector about 50 cents. But some of you might already have some of these parts so not all require purchasing. The first thing that I'm going to take care of is the enclosure. I need to figure out how to attach the heatsink, the power supply board and the transformer inside the enclosure. I thought about it and I think the best way to do it is something like this heatsink on the left side right here with the cooling fan blowing air out uh, on the back. Um, this way the air is sucked in through these vents through the heatsink and out the back. I'll have the uh, transformer right here on the right side and the power supply flipped over and attached to the top side of this enclosure, something like this. So I'm going to get started on, uh, on mounting all of this. See you in a moment. For mounting the heatsink I'm going to have to improvise and work with what I have on hand. So I have these two strips, uh, I think these are aluminum strips, and I'm going to use them like this. I'm going to use epoxy to hold them one 
right here and one in here and create something like a, a support structure for uh, attaching the heatsink and for attaching the heatsink I'm going to use uh, some of that uh, silicone uh, paste and I'm doing that to create a space between the bottom of the heatsink and the bottom of the enclosure just so I have enough space to slide the power transistor in there. I needed a way of attaching the power transistor to the heatsink so first I drilled a 2.5 millimeter hole using my drill press and then I used a 3 millimeter drill tap for getting the right tap for a 3 millimeter screw. Although the metallic tab of the transistor should be isolated from the heatsink, in my case the heatsink is isolated from everything else. So I'm just going to use some thermal paste and stick it right on the heatsink for better thermal transfer. Even though I'm making electrical contact, I don't care. As I've said, the heatsink is isolated from everything else. The next thing I did was to design the layout of my uh, front and back panel in uh, Eagle CAD uh, PCB layout tool. And once I was happy with the layout, I printed it on some paper and started making all the necessary marks on the panels for where the holes and cutouts need to be. If you need a PDF file uh, with my drawings, there's going to be a link in the description below. I then continued with uh, drilling all the necessary holes and I had some trouble drilling the bigger holes for the potentiometers. The drill bit was uh, catching the plastic panel and tearing it. Next I continued with the Dremel and uh, cutting disc and worked my way around the required cutouts. I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it but it kind of worked for me. So this is how the two panels look like after being cut with the Dremel. As you notice they're not uh, perfect, not at all. I've never been very good with uh, this kind of mechanical work. But uh, I did a couple of uh, corrections with the cutter and uh, everything seems to fit now. So what I have to do is mount everything on these panels and then install them on the enclosure just to get a sense of how I can uh, mount the transformer, uh, the heatsink and the actual power supply board just so to avoid touching anything on the front and the back panel. Ok, so now I have my uh, front panel and back panel assembled and it's time to figure out the exact placement for the uh, heatsink and for the transformer. So I believe heatsink will sit in something like this. The transformer will go in here like this and this uh, power supply board We'll go on top of everything like this. For the power supply board I'm using these uh, plastic feet, the kind that you see um, when you assemble a um, desktop computer. These are the plastic feet used to keep the motherboard isolated from the metal chassis. So I'm using four of these. I'm going to apply some uh, glue on the, these four feet and stick them to the top case something like that. Now I need to take care of the wiring of this power supply. I'm going to use the two supplied um, three wire connectors for the potentiometers and uh, I'm going to use these uh, silicon wires for the actual output of the power supply and the connections to the power transistor which is located on the heatsink. Let me explain what I did with the wiring. So let's start from the uh, back panel. Mains comes in through this IAC fused socket. Then the uh, neutral goes directly through the primary of the transformer and the live 
goes to the front panel to this uh, rocker switch and then comes back to the other line of the input of this uh, toroidal transformer. The transformer output uh, AC current goes to the power supply through these green lines. After rectification and filtering we should have something like 32 volts DC. I'm tapping that with these uh, two uh, twisted wires black and red for this DC to DC step down converter that will power the uh, cooling fan and the front panel meter with 12 volts. These three wires right here are for the um, power transistor which is stuck to the heatsink. The output of the power supply coming from this connector right here goes through the uh, panel meter through these uh, thick wires and then comes out of the uh, panel meter and goes to the uh, 4mm connector uh, once again through these uh, thick silicon wires. The panel meter is, is also powered from the uh, step down DC to DC converter with 12 volts but in order to have it function with external power you need to remove this back cover and remove a solder bridge inside like I'm doing here in this video. Remember, do not skip this step if you are supplying external power to your panel meter. And it's good to do that, to use external power for the panel meter, because you will get the full range, 0 to 32 volts, and the panel meter will continue to work even when you uh, step the uh, adjustable power supply down to 0 volts. The 10 turn pots have been wired uh, with these uh, JST connectors and wires to the um, power supply board. These uh, pigtails were supplied with the power supply kit. Make sure you get the pinout right for the uh, potentiometers you are using on your power supply. And finally I have extended the uh, constant current LED from the power supply uh, PCB up to the uh, front panel so it's visible outside of the enclosure. Now let's put everything together and see if we get a working power supply or the magic smoke. I managed to put everything back together. I even found a couple of uh, nice uh, knobs for these potentiometers. So let's switch this power supply on and see if it works. Then it seems to be working. Nice. We can see the output voltage on the panel meter. The cooling fan is working. Uh, it's quite a silent fan. I would say uh, similar to the Gelid Silent 5 that I installed on my Rigo. Uh, I didn't install the handle yet on this uh, enclosure because uh, just before securing the heatsink in place I glued a thermistor right next to the power transistor using thermal adhesive. I then have a pair of uh, wires uh, externally through this uh, handle hole uh, so that I can monitor the temperature of the heat sink um, using an Arduino for doing the conversion for the thermistor value. This is just for debugging and will be removed later once I figure out the uh, limitations of this uh, power supply or more exactly the limitations of the cooling system that I put in there. So before I end this video, I'm going to show you how to calibrate this uh, panel meter. I'm going to use my Fluke 87 for that. So let's check the uh, voltage measurement and see how accurate is that. So uh, the Fluke 87 is showing 1.78 volts, the panel meter uh, 1.83 volts, about 50 millivolts uh, deviation. So we need to correct for that. I'm going to press and hold the out button until this is showed on the screen and right now we are in the voltage calibration mode which is menu 0 and we can use the up and down arrows to calibrate for this uh, voltage until we get the same value as on the multimeter. I think the panel meter internally automatically does a, a low range and a high range and it detects that on the voltage it senses. So if we are under uh, 20 volts I think it will uh, calibrate for the low range and if we are 
over 20 volts it will calibrate for the high range so I'm interested in having accurate voltages especially around 3.3 and 5 volts so I'm going to calibrate now for the low range you need to give it some time for the value to stabilize Okay, so we are now getting the same value as on the flute. I'm going to press the um, out button once again, and uh, I, I'm just going to restart the procedure for the higher range because I'm not sure uh, if it works uh, within the same procedure. So when you get to this menu item two, you need to use the up arrow to switch to a yes here just to save the calibration data okay so right now I'm going to adjust for uh, the higher range for 30 volts and we're going to calibrate that as well okay entering the calibration menu so only a slight adjustment is needed here okay so now we're getting 30.0 volts switch this thing to yes and save the calibration data now let's uh, try to calibrate the um, current meter so I'm going to switch my multimeter to amps let's go for 100 milliamps okay let's enter the calibration menu this is where we calibrate the current meter okay so uh, I think now we have the current meter calibrated as well I hope you enjoyed watching me build this uh, power supply it was uh, quite a nice project for me to work on and uh, there will be links in the description for all the items I used to build this uh, power supply. So do check those links out. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I will see you next time.